to the years spent together just hold on i'm thinking this might be forever we've torn down all of the walls in front of us unspoken all the ideas grown within us it's my trust to make it better transform Welcome to the ITMA 2020 virtual launch and welcome to the ITMA virtual studio as well. It's great to see all of you. I'm your host, Ralph Cochran, and that was Gigi McFarlane singing Transforming the World of Textiles, a song specially written as the theme of ITMA 2023. And as you probably already realize, we're live on Facebook and also YouTube. So why don't I ask you a question? Tell us where you're from. Uh, and we can uh, go to some of the comments. So Susanna here says, fantastic singer and great song. Well, I've got some news for you, Susanna, because Gigi is actually watching on YouTube. So uh, welcome, Gigi, fantastic song. I think it's on all of our brains now. Uh, we've been listening to that really, really good. Uh, and if you'd like to hear the song again and share it, it'll be available on itma.com and also all of their social media platforms, which is pretty much the whole set. So Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And also you can tune into their podcast series with business leaders, which is on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So let's see where people are from. I can see here, uh, we've got good morning from Egypt. Um, so good morning to you, Ahmed. Great to see you here. Thanks for taking part. Um, and also I did see somebody from Wuppertal. Gizmo, good morning from Wuppertal. It's morning in, in Europe, of course, for those of you further afield. Uh, somebody from Colombia here. I wonder what time it is in Colombia. It's got to be middle of the night. Congratulations to you. Um, so fantastic. Let's just, for those of you who've not heard of ITMA, I can't imagine that you haven't, but let me just tell you a little bit about ITMA. It is the international, sorry, let me start again. 
So one of the best things about ITMA is the international community, and it's great to see so many of you joining. For those that don't know, ITMA is the world's largest international textile and garment technology exhibition. And in 2023, it's going to be held in the beautiful city of Milan. Uh, we're going to see a little bit of Milan a bit later on in the launch video. So what's coming up in today's program? Well, we'll be hearing from Cimatex president, Mr. Ernesto Maurer, and we're also going to meet Cimatex's nine national associations, along with ITMA services, who are the organizer of ITMA 2023. And we have a live panel where you can ask questions of four special industrialists uh, from Cimatex. And we also have the brand new ITMA 2023 launch video. So I'm looking forward to that. But without further ado, please welcome Cimatex president, Mr. Ernesto Mara, and meet the people who organize ITMA. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to the virtual launch of ITMA 2023 to all of you. It is a very important ITMA that will be held in Milan in 2023 because we can then again physically meet and be in a physical place together. After Barcelona in 2019, that was a record show where so many visitors and exhibitors were present, we really strive to have an equally important show in Milan. Transforming the world of textile is also the theme for the next ITMA in Milan. But this includes not only innovative materials and the digitalization, but it is also the very high importance of sustainability. And above all, we all want to put a lot of effort in that. But beside of that, we also have prepared for you a virtual platform that is available 24 seven. So whatever might happen, you have a possibility to meet and greet your customers your exhibitors at the same time, as I said, 24 seven. And that is something that really gives us assurance that whatever will happen in the next years, we will be present with a very innovative ITMA. So therefore I invite you to check the websites on a constant base so that you see what will happen in Milan. And I'm looking forward to seeing you there physically and I am really happy that all of you will be there. At ITMA, you will see radical changes in technology, far-reaching digitalization that allows seamless integration of processes and products. ITMA will inspire to make your business more sustainable and more successful. Textile professionals will see the world's largest selection of textile machinery and materials on display. Yet faster and smarter machines will show their performances for technology adapters. ITMA itself is evolving, and the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated its digital transformation. So we will be working to introduce new opportunities for our exhibitors to better connect with visitors through a digital platform. We are the forerunners, and we are happy to have a brand like ITMA, where we can all meet and discuss these innovations. Hi, it is my pleasure to be with you today. As the organizing team, we are pleased to organize ITMA for the industry once again. Intensive preparation is now underway to ensure that ITMA 2023 will be a great success for you. All virtual and physical ITMA 23 visitors will be equipped with AI-enabled tools to ensure that their business will take advantage of every new technology. Come to see, listen and discuss what the leading companies of our industry are doing. Take care, stay well, and looking forward to seeing you very soon in Milan, virtually or in person. Join us at ITMA 2023, and you also will be an actor in the ongoing transformation of the world. Be a part of the future 
of our industry. We look forward to welcoming you in Milan. Join us at IFMA 2023. See you in Milan. Well, I hope you enjoyed meeting some of the members who will play a part in making ITMA a success. Uh, before we get to our next segment, we've got a poll, so we'd like you to take part. If you've got your phone with you, you can click on this QR code. Just go to the camera app on your phone, and it should recognize it. Or you can go to menti.com and type in the code, which is 9817163. So two ways to take part. We're also going to put the link directly into Facebook and YouTube. And the first question, um, we have a minute for each question. So let's uh, let's look at the first one yet. So what do you find is the most interesting feature at ITMA? Is it A, live machinery demonstrations? Is it B, understanding the complete textile and garment value chain? C, it's a launch pad for new products. D, participation by manufacturers and brand owners only. Or is it E, all of the above? So just whilst you're having a little think about answering that poll question, I'll tell you a bit more about uh, the exhibition. So we've got some new features coming at ITMA 2023. There's the Join ITMA Network. For those of you who've not signed up yet, you should look at the website to get exclusive access to trends and insights uh, from the textile and garment industry. And you can also stay updated, so regular news features. I can see some of the results coming in here. Um, we've also got uh, some new features, including an AI-powered business matching tool. Uh, so for those of you who are interested in networking, I imagine that's all of you. There's a new tool that's going to help you do that. Um, and that will help both exhibitors and visitors maximize their time on site more effectively. So interesting. Uh, and there's a new exhibiting product chapter tool, uh, especially for composites. So if you're interested in composites and that full name of that section on the website is machinery for textile reinforcement structures for composites, auxiliary machinery and accessories. So I think we're almost ready for the answer of the first poll. And uh, of course, a lot of people saying all of the above. I mean, pretty even spread there. Live machinery demonstrations, 25%. Um, and uh, also, I can see down here, sort of evenly split between participation by manufacturers and brand owners and a launching pad for new products and also complete textile and garment value chain. So thank you for taking part. There's another poll question, so just the two questions. The second one is, is it necessary to have an alternative online sourcing platform for the industry in addition to the physical exhibition, which happens only once every four years? Uh, so that question again, do you think it'd be a good idea to have an online sourcing platform as well as the physical exhibition that happens every four years? So just whilst you're thinking about your answer, um, I will carry on telling you a little bit more about ITMA 2023. So there's also the ITMA Digital Booth, which is a new online sourcing platform, and that's going to be a ma a made available to all exhibition uh, exhibitors and visitors. And this will allow you to interact with each other 365 days of the year. So that's quite an interesting development. There's going to be some new digital marketing opportunities as well for ITMA 2023. And more information will be shared within the community. So make sure you've hit subscribe or like. I feel like a YouTuber saying that. Make sure you've hit subscribe or like or signed up on the ITMA website. All right, let's take a look at the results of the second poll. So not surprisingly, a lot of you agreeing, I think, in these interesting times that we're living in, that it'd be a good idea to have an online sourcing platform as well as the physical exhibition. So 75% of you agreeing and lots of comments as well. Let's put Chris on. Chris agrees. Chris T agrees on, uh, on YouTube. Um, I'm loving all the comments, by the way, that are coming through. I will put some of those on the screen in a little while when we move on to our panel. Okay, well, this is a very special section. I'd like to introduce you for the first time, we're going to screen the Cimatex special.
how many ITMAs have you attended? I have attended two ITMAs, 2015 and 2019. 10 ITMAs exhibition in my life. My first ITMA was in uh, 1987. And six ITMAs in Asia from Singapore to Ophir. What are the best souvenirs that you had from ITMAs? This limited edition pin. My colleague of VDMA given to me during uh, 2007 Munich edition. I have here with me a curious souvenir given to me by an exhibitor. What is the most memorable part of ITMA? The first time I went to an ITMA exhibition, uh, we stayed in a tent uh, just over the border into Germany from Basel. We were in the best place. Although it was a tent, it was the best place to be. My best memories are always uh, meeting people, be it from sellers, buyers, textile machinery producers, journalists and so on. That's always very nice and I enjoy that a lot. I remember about a big customer. I believe most of us knew him. He was Mr. Roger Milliken. He bought from us about 1,000 machines and gave us about six months production. For me and my team, uh, in 1991 in Hanover, the Edmund took place in Germany at that time. Onwards from 1991, I was working and my team was working for every Edma uh, since. What is ITMA's unique selling point? It's the people. All the great textile machinery minds gather at one place. It must be quality. ITMA is the only show that brings a high quality live machinery exhibition. ITMA is the Olympics of the sector. A strong innovation that characterizes the technological offer presented during the fair. The specialty about ITMA uh, is for me that are real running machines. I'm seeing the machinery working on real time. ITMA is known for new trend and technology innovations. From the producers of textiles, textile machineries, the brands, the students. So everyone is there and that makes it a very unique event. <laughs> Join, Join us. us. Join us. At ITMA. Held in Milan. In 2023. 2023. Transform, Transform the world of textiles. Don't miss it. See you in Milan. In 2023. See you in 2023. Have a good time. Bye-bye. Thank you. So many great memories of ITMA. And just in the comments here, I can see Ramim, who's saying 2019 in Barcelona was an amazing experience. And Dave, who said he's been to three ITMA shows, um, seem to be lots of fantastic memories there. So thank you to all the SEMA Text members who came together to make that video. And now I've got a very special segment. We're going to take your questions in the comments, so feel free to fire away. But let me introduce the panel members first of all. Uh, Charles Bedouin is chairman of ITMA Services, CEO and owner of Van Der Wheeler. So welcome to Charles. Alex Zucchi is the president of Achimeet, the Association of Italian Textile Machinery Manufacturers. Uh, welcome, Alex. Uh, Regina Bruckner is on the ITMA Services Board. She's the chairperson of VDMA and owner of the Bruckner Group. Welcome to Regina. And last but not least, we have Oscar Ruiz, who is president of Achimeet. Uh, Amtex, the Spanish Textile Machinery Association, and he's also the COO and co-owner of Rios Comatex. So welcome to all of the panel. I'm going to start with a nice, easy question. After all of the videos and things that we've seen, um, maybe I'll start with you, Charles. What is the one thing you're really looking forward to at ITMA 2023? Oh, it's uh, fantastic to be back in Italy. It's uh, for textiles, for culture, for food, for so many things, a fantastic place. Well, maybe I'll ask you, Alex, seeing as it's your home country, uh, you're, you're there near Milan right now. Um, what are you looking forward to at ITMA 2023? Oh, well, uh, first, congratulate for this presentation, because I think uh, 
you could not choose better song the one that start this uh, streaming presentation he said we found the way to build a better day 2023 really will be a better day so it will be a moment where we really finally we will can meet each other again face to face and share our thinking and set up our cooperation this is the place where most of the co cooperation start is exactly in my place well oscar if i come to you i mean it, we're hard right now not to talk about the pandemic but maybe we'll talk about it in a positive way um obviously it's a challenging time what are some of the opportunities though that that you're seeing for the after the pandemic well there are some opportunities will raise as you say it's hard to know and it's hard to see positive things after all this year has been through but there are opportunities i mean there there will be opportunities in healthcare opportunities in new designs itma 23 will bring will bring a new impact on the new industry where to see where the industry is moving to sustainability during the pandemic it seemed that the world uh problem of environment was out but after the pandemic it's back again so it's going to be a huge trend to take care on textiles also as an industry uh regina if i come to you welcome to the panel um what challenges and opportunities are you seeing at the moment well i see that we um, are in the digital world now really we are right there and people accept it but i think if we come back to milan we will say wow how great it is to see again people and then we will well value this moment much more much more than we do it perhaps today so I think it's also a chance that we um, will work in a different way in future. And of course, digitalization will bring a lot of positive um, moves forward to our industry. But um, in the end, it's about personal contact. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I was certainly kind of buoyed up by uh, what I was seeing there. I can't wait to get back to Milan and uh, Alex's hometown of Bergamo. Um, don't forget, if you want to ask the panel uh, members a question, you can uh, just put them in the comments and I'll come to those shortly. Uh, but Alex, I'd like to come back to you. One of the big features certainly of uh, this exhibition in 2023 is looking at trends in textile technologies. Uh, what kind of things are you seeing in terms of innovation at the moment? Uh, well, if I should say what I'm thinking that probably what we are going to see in 2023 probably is not yet developed because digitalization now is booming is improving every day there is a new development certainly digitalization will be one of the most important thing where we'll see machine interconnected uh, everything will be let's say more sophisticated so but honestly I expect to see something that till now is not yet developed. And this opportunity created by our association, by our uh, Sematex together with ISMD, I think will give this opportunity and uh, to let everybody, even the smallest company, to be on this platform that we were uh, searching before, that to show them that it's possible even a small size company can be present all over the world just to a click. Yeah, and I think you're seeing that right now, aren't you? I mean, the communities come together. We've got people watching this live from all parts of the world, whether it's the middle of the night, the morning or the afternoon. Um, we're starting to get some questions in from the audience. So I'm going to go to, I've already picked on you, Chris. I'm going to go to Rimtex Industries, I think. I'll just put this on screen. Um, so after a very quiet 2020, now we see an upsurge in investments in all areas of textile globally. How do you see this trend and how long do you think it's going to last? So Alex, you're still on screen. What do you think to mergers and acquisitions, investment, what, what kind of trends are you seeing? Well, certainly after this pandemic, I think that is not yet complete, it's not yet expired. Uh, we will see in the market a lot of change and oh, honestly i also expect that some company will merge each other in order to be more credible uh, today we have uh, 
uh, opportunity to have also our friend Charles that recently I was saying just took over a big Italian company. This is part of the integration that will happen in the next years because if the small company uh, want to survive, they have to merge each other, we have to intensify the cooperation to be more powerful and invest in what is the future that I said before is the uh, digitalization. So this is uh, certainly uh, the trend. That's why I said before that to 2023 uh, we expect to be a great year for everybody because at least this year it will be still trouble for the pandemic, but 2022 I think we are going to recover consistently and 2023, particularly in June in Milan, we'll see a very spectacular exhibition integrating in between real exhibition and also digital exhibition. Thank you very much. Well, Charles, I'll come to you next. Uh, I've got a question here from the ColorJet group. Uh, so they're asking, has COVID-19, let's just put Charles on screen, there we go, has COVID-19 accelerated the adoption of digital printing over perhaps more traditional methods um, by the textile industry as it looks to meet shorter production time and more customization? And I think this might be their speciality because they've also asked a second <laughs> question. Um, about digital printing machine. But what, what kind of uh, trends are you seeing in this area? Well, I think uh, traditionally in textile uh, industries, many technologies have been competing with each other. And uh, the advances in one technology also usually produces advances in the other technologies that compete with it. So it's very interesting to go to the exhibitions and watch what the progresses are of each technology. You know, the all the technologies are now getting fully digital, like uh, the digital printing, but also uh, jacquard weaving or other types of uh, uh, non-woven products have become fully digital. And this is what really will be interesting in the exhibition is we will see real breakthroughs around artificial intelligence, around uh, greening of the products, around quality of the products that are for the moment unthinkable. Well, Oscar, I've got a question for you as well. This one is from uh, Jeroen. Uh, I hope I've pronounced that right. I apologize if I haven't. And he's asking, will there be a trend towards mini factories close to customers to make supply chains even leaner? So a little bit like uh, 3D printing, I suppose, kind of just in time. What kind yeah. of things are you seeing in, in this area? Could be. Could be for a, for a fast supply to use a 3D printer. Uh, but of course, if you need mass production, you will need to go to real equipment of textiles. But of course, there are some machines in textiles that are very specific and very lean to do short productions at a very high quality and low cost. So ITMA is also a good place to, to see these opportunities. We are a uh, Comatex, a small company that deals with all the world and we do very niche products for uh, lean manufacturers and even or customized machines, customized projects. So the trend towards manufacturers will have to be to be very flexible, be very fast, time to market. Uh, as manufacturers, all of us, we need to really deal with time to market because the, the trends all fly out fast. So when they need customers need something, we have to give it to them yesterday. So everything will be faster, 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 and smaller quantities in production. So faster, cheaper, better. Yes. I, I always remember you can't have all three, right? But you can only have two. <laughs> um, you have to so, try. <laughs> you can try, yeah. Um, so I'm going to switch, whilst I've got you on screen, I'm going to switch, switch to Ricardo's question uh, <clears throat> earlier on. So he's saying, what do you think are the market trends in the space of non-woven technologies, especially during and after the COVID pandemic? OK. Uh, space for non-woven. Non-woven technologies have a lot of applications, lots of them. Now we can see from the surgical mask or the filters in the mask, the massive usage of non-wovens. Even, even in Europe, it's almost over for the surgical masks. There was a moment in, in June, July that it was very hard to get the raw material from non-wovens for the masks. So 
new trends for non-wovens, they can be applied in many, many places in textiles. So I trust it's going to be a very hand-by-hand -hand with knitting textiles, woven textiles, the non-woven will be, will be there in many applications. Thank you very much. Um, all right, let's go to uh, Regina. We've got so many questions coming in here. And I'm slightly struggling to keep up with them. Uh, let's try Dave. Dave Tube, great username. Um, so will we see a bigger offer of textile post-consumer solutions that closes the textile supply and production chain? Making, oh, this one's about sustainability. Good question. So making the production chain more sustainable. I do believe that that will be a trend in ITMA 2023, that people will ask for the textile supply chain. They will know, would like to know where the things are made and how they are made. And if you can trace this then back to, to the producer of cotton or to the producer of polyester and then see who else was working on it, working on it I think this will hopefully also change something in the mindset of the consumer because textile is such a complex thing. And if you see all the machines that are necessary to do that, all the work that is necessary to really make a final product, then people will understand also that it is worth to keep it and really appreciate it. So I think this, with the help of digitalization, we will have the traceability and also get a more sustainable way of production. But if all the consumer is the big question, will the consumer really appreciate the product? Yeah, well, I think there's a related question here as well. So one of the things that's been talked about on the ITMA website for ITMA 2023 is the circular economy as well. I mean, do you do you have a similar view about the circular economy that perhaps post-pandemic the consumer might change? Or do you think this is still going to be a big trend as we get nearer to 2023? On the one hand side, we have to work on this, on the circular economy, and we have to see what can be reused. But first of all, we should try to minimize waste and minimize um, things that are not made in the real, real, right way. So produce it right in the first product. So just try to reduce impact by producing whatever you do. And then we can go to about a circular economy that will help to also be more sustainable, especially in the polyester, polyamide fibers. There will be a big, big trend. I definitely see that. Uh, Charles, I'm going to ask you the same question. Thank you, uh, Regina. Um, circular economy, what are your views on how that's progressing and kind of making it, I guess, more successful? <clears throat> This is uh, indeed a big trend that uh, we see a lot of investments also going in how to regenerate basically the waste that we produce. A good example, for example, is all the plastic bottles uh, of water and Coca-Cola and whatever that you now see being reused, uh, regrounded and reused in uh, textile uh, uh, garments or in uh, to make yarn. So you see that uh, the textile is very quickly to pick up how to make products in a circular way and as such also reduce the cost price of the textile what, and certainly the footprint of uh, textiles in the world. Um, Alex, I wonder if I can ask you the same question. And I also have some comments about here and as well about the Italian market. But let's just get your view on the circular economy and also sustainability. Well, while Regina was giving uh, uh, her reply, I was thinking a, a small detail also following Charles' uh, comment. Uh, we always see mainly how to recover the textile, the garments and, and all the fabric. I was thinking how we can eventually set up something to recover our machinery, the components of our machinery, that probably we can also consider something in this field as a circular economy, find a way a way to reuse parts of our machinery, not only focusing on the product that we generate, that is the fabric. So this is something probably that uh, 
we are not that much thinking about, but can be a possibility. Regina said a, a very important thing. He said, we must also focus from now on the traceability of the component of our machinery, reducing maybe the component, uh, reducing the wastage of the company, but also let's think that probably there is a way also to find a recovery of components of our machinery. This is different, let's say, view of circular economy applied in machinery, uh, textile machinery. This is something maybe new idea to think about. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting idea. Oscar, I'm, I'm going to come to you next. We've got some kind of variations on a on a theme. So exactly what Alex was just saying, Sally is, say, is saying, will we see any new innovations addressing how machines are powered, perhaps low energy usage or alternative and sustainable ways to power the equipment? And there are other comments as well here just about sustainability, about kind of innovation to reduce the impact. What, what do you think? I think this is a very important point, as as Alex and Regina were saying. First is the machine. So sustainability is not just the end product, it's all the process. So first, how do we make the machines? So we have solar panels in, in our plants to make the machines efficiently. Do we waste a lot of water? And then the innovations in the machines we can do, as they mentioned, uh, about using materials that can be retaken back to the to the market and uh, recycled but also to make less power consumption less water consumption or go to zero and there are great investments in the in the gene manufacturing that was using a lot of water to go to zero water so that is an innovation that makes you be top just right away uh, we're talking about recycling the plastic bottles into clothes but the process, you have a lot of energy and a lot of water consumption. So if in that process you can manage to make less power or zero target is zero water consumption, then that's more much more efficient to reuse the bottles. Otherwise, maybe it's better to just make the yarn again. So there are lots of innovations that will come to that and uh, how the machines are powered, lower energy usage, as the question is Sally saying. This is all, all very important. We all internally in every manufacturing equipment company, we are dealing with this daily, trying to improve these points. Well, thank you to the to you and also to the whole panel. Um, I'm just going to say thank you to a couple more people as well. So I can't get through all your comments, but Frank, the feeling's mutual. It's great to see so many friends from ITMA's past all around the world. And we do hope that you're all well and safe. So thank you very much to the panelists. That's all we've got time for, unfortunately. I can see a lot of comments on here as well about, uh, for example, will there be talk of digital transformation at the conference? Uh, I think um, the main answer that we'd give is please join in the community. So you're leaving your comments here. Make sure that you follow us on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, register on the website. We'll be giving lots more updates. I know a couple of you are asking, will there be more live streaming? Will there be more sessions made available? I think by 2023, the answer will be yes, but I don't want to put those words in the organizing committee's um, <laughs> mouth. Um, but I'd just like to thank Alex, Oscar, Regina, and Charles for a fantastic panel. Thank you so much for taking the questions like this as well from the audience, kind of putting you on the spot. Um, really, really good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, so the uh, the next part of the show um, is going to be the launch of the video. Now, I've been looking forward to seeing this um, because you're going to be the first people to watch Transforming the World of Textiles, the ITMA 2023 video. Enjoy. Innovation and the Internet of Things are fueling waves of change in the world of textiles opening up endless possibilities, driving an explosion of applications bolder than ever before. The textile industry has been a catalyst of technological changes, playing a critical role in the industrial revolutions that drive groundbreaking innovations. 
The advancement in textile making technology and research into raw materials gave rise to a new era in man made fibers. New materials such as rayon, nylon, and polyester were created with the burst of textile making and materials innovations. ITMA was organized to showcase the innovations. The ideas and solutions presented spurred the industry on. New machinery came on stream. Inventive dyeing techniques emerged and revolutionized the way textiles were colored. The arrival of the third industrial revolution further transformed textile production and advanced materials. With the dawn of the digital age, textile printing received a fresh impetus. And textile production has never been the same since. From fast fashion to mass customization, making on-demand production a priority for producers. And a new global direct-to-garment industry emerged with the growth of web-to-print and e-commerce. A new role for textiles was defined following the introduction of advanced materials such as aramid fibers. A parallel industry in technical textiles arose with an ever-growing range of innovative applications and advancements in materials science, revolutionizing many facets of daily life. With the spotlight on the textile industry in recent years, several breakthroughs in materials and processes are moving the industry towards greater sustainability. While in a pandemic world, medical and hygiene needs are rocketing demand for non-wovens. As Industry 4.0 gains traction worldwide, predictive analytics and artificial intelligence are driving positive change in smart factories and lights-out manufacturing, opening up vistas of opportunities like never before. Be part of ITMA 2023 to transform the world of textiles. Wow, I want to be there already. I'm really looking forward to ITMA 2023. I uh, just want to show you our new website. So this is itma.com. It's a fresh new look and experience. And if you haven't already checked it out, make sure you do because it was only launched this week. So there's lots of new information and new areas. There's a media gallery uh, with a wealth of information there for you about the industry. And that's where you can watch short videos as well produced by ITMA Live. So I know that was one of the questions in the comments. Where can we find the videos and will there be more? Yes, in the media gallery, that's the place to go. There's also the ITMA blog. Uh, which is basically the place for the latest news. They're going to be publishing new information about the industry every month. And it's also been revamped so you can search more easily. Uh, I'd like to remind you about the space application. So that opens on the 3rd of March. You can actually see a countdown behind me on the website to make it nice and easy. So 33 days time, uh, but that's the 3rd of March that the space application opens. Well, we've come to the end of the ITMA 2023 virtual launch program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking part on Facebook and YouTube. Do make sure that you've hit subscribe uh, on both of those channels so that you get all of the updates. And if you'd like to catch this program again, you'll find it, of course, on Facebook and YouTube, uh, but also on the ITMA website. Um, a final plug for the podcast series as well. I'm a big podcast fan. So if you want to hear from business leaders about the latest trends, challenges, and opportunities, that's the place for you. And you'll find it on Spotify and also Apple Podcasts. So that's it. Subscribe and share. Enjoy, I hope you enjoyed this virtual launch and thank you for taking part.